Hi guys, welcome back. And here, as you see, I have included some more output. This is this is what a computer will give us if we were to feed it this data here, okay, and tell it that we want to do a two-way ANOVA with replications. This is the output we would get. Okay, so let's just quickly review this output. There's a lot more here than we need. Okay, so let's just focus on first the summary section. Okay, the summary section, as you see, the levels of detergent are along the column. That's what that was our factor B, and the levels of factor A temperature are along this first column over here. Okay, so we have a summary here. Instead of just the raw data, I am I know that detergent A washed with cold water in cold water used in cold water rather produces uh, an average whiteness reading of 43.33 with a variance of 14.33. Uh, a sum of 130 and there were three times that we we did that okay um, and you could take that for any of the detergents so take detergent C and take coal uh, sorry hot so the average which is probably the most interesting number in the summary is 34.33 for detergent C hot water we did it three times and the average was 34.33 okay what else about the the summary section well you see in this this whole section here has to do with cold temperature so everything to do with cold temperature is totaled here so there were nine total washings with cold water the average whiteness reading for cold water was 46.22 regardless of which detergent you use that's important the average 46.22 is under the total that means it doesn't matter which detergent was used it's across all detergents okay and same goes for the variance okay now we can do that for um, warm temperature and hot temperature. The hot temperature uh, produced a average reading of 40.78 regardless of what detergent was used. We could also look at it the other way. We could say let's just look at detergent A and regardless of what temperature it was washed in. So the average for detergent A regardless of the temperature used was 43.11 let me delete this okay the average whiteness reading for detergent B was 41.22 regardless of what temperature and the average for detergent C was 46.55 regardless of the temperature we also get the variances if we want so the variance of detergent A was 38.86, 10.94 for detergent B, and 90.27 for detergent C, and so on and so forth. So that's how you read this table. Okay? Okay, so that's for the summary section. What about this section over here? Well, this is the answer to all our hypothesis tests. Okay, so this is this summary section gives us some overview of our data and our factors. This section here answers all our two-way ANOVA hypothesis questions. So first thing, since we stated the hypothesis for interaction first, and I suggest that you always do that let's answer the hypothesis test for interaction remember alpha was 0.01 that got chopped off here right remember the null 
is what we assume to be true. And in this case, in a two-way ANOVA interaction test, the null hypothesis says that there is no interaction between detergent and temperature, okay? Or factor A and factor B in whatever example you're looking at. We need to have evidence in order to show that there is interaction, so we put that in the alternative hypothesis. So if we reject HO, we're saying that we have strong evidence for uh, there being interaction. So let's see what the data provided, what the computer output provided. You go, we go to the ANOVA section, okay, and under sources of variation, you'll see there's three. Okay, a four rather. And three of those pertain to us and one of them we don't need to worry about. Interactions, easy enough to find. This entire row has to do with interaction. So everything we need to answer this question, this hypothesis test is on this row. And we can do it in two ways. We can disregard some of these other values because they all culminate in this last three columns here. Okay, that is we have an F value of 14.91 and F critical is software's way of, of, of uh, specifying FU so that's the same thing so note that for yourself FU which is U was for upper critical value it's not an obscenity right and for interaction FU was 4.58 remember this was this came from a table whereas this we calculated from our data okay it's the same idea here although the computer did all that hard calculation for us and gave us the, t the value from the table that we need okay clearly F is greater than FU and if you recall from one way ANOVA the rule was if F is greater than FU you reject the null hypothesis Right? Another way to come to that same conclusion is, if you recall, in module zero, we talked about p-values in the hypothesis test review. Well, there's a p-value. Remember, the rule there was, if a p-value was less than, let's, let's write this p-value first, and alpha. If a p-value was less than alpha, you reject a null hypothesis. These, this is two ways of coming to a conclusion in any hypothesis test. Okay? You have choices sometimes. So you should be aware of how, in this particular case, in two-way ANOVA, where this is the output that you would be faced with, to be able to make the decision in um, both ways. If I were to give you the p-value, you know what to do with the p-value compared to alpha. If it's less than alpha, reject the null. If I give you an f test statistic and I give you an f upper critical value, or what the software is calling f crit critical, then you know that if f is greater than f u, you reject h o. They will always agree so be comfortable using either. So now let's go back to talking about what does this mean. Okay, so I rejected HO. Let's go back to what HO said. HO said there's no interaction between detergent and water temperature. So I'm rejecting that. There's evidence to show that there is interaction between detergent and water temperature. So I can conclude, and I can put into words here, and conclude, and let me just verbalize this, that there is interaction between detergent and water temperature. In other words, it depends. We don't know exactly how it depends yet, but we know that it depends. We know that perhaps some factors, rather some detergent, is better at a particular water temperature and really poor in another water temperature. So we can't just say that it's the best water, uh, best detergent. It depends. Okay. We'll we'll learn more about that now by performing what's called a cell means plot. 
So we're going to make a cell means plot and I show you how to create one of these in one of the Google Sheets tutorials. But for now, I'm just going to present it and we're going to analyze it instead. We'll leave the tutorial to create this plot for a subsequent video. Okay, so here's the cell means plot. Okay, I will show you how to create one of these using Google Sheets. But for now, since since I'm doing interaction, I did the hypothesis test and then a good tool for analyzing and understanding a little better about the interaction after the hypothesis test for interaction is to look at what's called the cell means plot and here is the cell means plot so let me just pull this kind of right under here let's scroll down so we've determined that there is significant interaction let's try to see what that interaction might be well first off let's understand this plot a little more we have the mean whiteness reading going along the y-axis and detergent levels going along the x-axis we also have three lines and there's the legend for the colors of the lines so each line represents one of the water temperatures and I've labeled this cell means plot okay so let's take a look at this let's just take a slice there's many ways many things to probably learn from here let's look at the most obvious for me these gaps represent some clear differences okay so looking at detergent C I see that the hot so that's the gray line uh, water temperature seems to be the for detergent C the worst performing so detergent C doesn't seem to be doing very well in hot water but it seems to be doing better than all the other detergents just look to the left at in uh, warm and cold temperatures okay so it performs very poorly in hot in fact worse than all w worse than the other two okay considerably worse than detergent B in fact and even worse than detergent A but even within detergent C once again hot water seems to be its weakness but it does very well with cold and warm so we can't just say detergent C is the best because it's doing very well better than the other detergents in these two conditions because it's the worst in fact if you consider hot water so there is interaction it depends right okay let's go to detergent B detergent B seems to perform not too different in the different water temperatures you could argue that cold is its best performing temperature and hot its worst but these this is very close so I wouldn't go too far with this it's not as dramatic as this right let's go to detergent A and we see that there is a, a lot more there's a lot bigger gaps here not as dramatic as this but there is a little bit more of a story than with detergent B here right in detergent A we see that the best it performs best in hot water and worst in warm water and okay in cold water in fact if you were to compare it to the other detergents I would say as an overall after all after looking at all this I would say that if I had to wash in cold water or warm water I would choose detergent C but I would definitely not choose detergent C if I'm washing in hot water if I'm washing in hot water the choice seems to be clearly detergent A okay as far as detergent B seems to be pretty average in all and consistent in all three and that might be a nice quality uh, to have to just be kind of good at uh, all the, at everything right instead of poor at hot and really good and cold and so forth okay so that is based that sums up the interaction so we have a lot better idea remember the hypothesis test here that we performed we found out that there was interaction because we rejected the null hypothesis but we didn't know exactly we didn't know much more than that so by making this plot and looking at it 
and spend a little time and slicing it up in different ways, we're able to better, a lot better understand the um, intricacies of that interaction. Okay? So I'm going to stop here and actually do the other two hypothesis tests as a part four. Okay? Because this seemed, this one's focused on interaction. Let's just leave it at that and then go on to leave interaction and talk about uh, detergent and uh, water temperature separately and see whether they are significant. Okay, so continue to watch this example to its conclusion, possibly in part four.